All right, everybody, we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, Grief Talk, titled Surviving the Holidays. Today's webinar is being presented by The Warm Place and is designed to cater to anyone who wants to learn about companioning and helping others who are grieving the death of a loved one. Before we get started with the presentation, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share a link with you after the event is complete. We welcome you to revisit this content yourself and share it with your colleagues. You will also receive a survey after the webinar. We would love to hear your thoughts and feedback. We also invite your questions. Please look at the chat box on your screen. If you think of a question for the speaker at any point, just type it in there and we will hold it for the Q&A portion at the end of the event. We will try to get to as many questions as possible. Before I welcome today's presenter, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Katie Rusi, and I am the communications manager here at The Warm Place. I have been with the organization a little over a year now and am responsible for PR, marketing, and all the events that we host from smaller family events to our largest fundraisers. I have a bachelor's in hospitality management from the University of North Texas, and the majority of my career has been in events for large luxury senior living properties. Now to today's presenter, our program director, Dana Miner. Dana joined The Warm Place as the program director in January of 2019. Dana holds a bachelor's in psychology from Texas Tech University and a master's in rehabilitation counseling from the University of North Texas and has more than 25 years of experience counseling children and families. She is also a certified school counselor. Dana served on the Speakers Bureau for the National Center for Youth Issues and taught a variety of psychology courses at Tarrant County College. At this time, I'm going to hand the floor over to Dana, who is going to start today's presentation. Welcome everyone to our Grief Talk Surviving the Holidays. Today, we are going to discuss helpful ways to support children, adolescents, and families who are grieving and navigating grief during the holidays. We will be sharing activities and lots of family traditions that many of our Warm Place families have found meaningful during the holiday season. We are also looking forward to being able to share more about the Warm Place and our services. Today, we are going to spend some time together embracing ways to best support children and families who are grieving. During this holiday season, we want to acknowledge that everyone's grief is unique, and we want to recognize and honor those we are remembering. I want you to take just a few moments to think about who you are remembering this holiday season. Regardless of which holidays you celebrate, during this time of year, there is an emphasis on family and it can be difficult to navigate. It's important to be patient. And when I say being patient, it's really about being patient with yourself and being patient with others. Really listen and lean into others. Try to understand their unique perspective. And one of the things I find to be most helpful is to remember to follow their lead. Provide space for them to share when they are ready, and it's okay if they're not. And remember to focus on the person. Make no assumptions. It is normal to have a wide range of emotions, and really acknowledging these feelings, it's important to show compassion. One of the things that we want to talk about is how we can spend time together and as much time together as possible during this time, but knowing that it's okay if you wanna change the way that you celebrate. One of the things that most of our families have actually provided that has been most helpful in providing support is when people offer practical help. So for example, during this holiday season, perhaps you could offer someone to help them wrap their presents or perhaps pick up a meal for their family, even help out with laundry or if they're traveling, you could help them just be with them while they're packing or help them pack. During this busy holiday season, perhaps helping them with some after-school activities would also be very beneficial and show your support. 
There are so, so many ways that you can let someone know that you're there for them and that you're creating space for their feelings. At the place, we talk a lot about walking hand in hand through grief. Some of you may be familiar with Dr. Alan Wolfelt and his companioning philosophy. As some of you know, we train all of our Warm Place volunteers in this approach to supporting children and families who are grieving. For those of you who are not familiar with Dr. Alan Wolfelt, he has been recognized as one of the leading grief educators and grief counselors, and he's known around the world for his compassionate message of hope and healing. There are actually 11 tenants, but I just wanted to highlight a few for you today. Companioning is about being present to another person's pain. It is not about taking away the pain. Companioning is about listening with the heart. It is not about analyzing with the head. Companioning is about bearing witness to the struggles of others. It is not about judging or directing these struggles. Companioning is about walking alongside. It is not about leading or being led. And companioning is about discovering the gifts of sacred silence. It does not mean filling up every moment with words. This approach to grief care can really help create space for openness and really being able to understand, as well as compassion and hope. You can make a powerful difference when you are being truly present. So what does it mean to be truly present? As shared in the previous slide, one of the greatest gifts that you can give someone is the gift of yourself and the gift of being present to another person's pain. It's important through this to be able to show unwavering compassion and showing compassion to yourself as well as others. We talk a lot about giving permission. Give permission to feel and really share those authentic feelings. Be open to really understand someone else's unique perspective. It's important to remember that if we're offering someone our own experience by saying things like, I know exactly how you feel, or I know how you feel, it might seem comforting at the time, but claiming to know before trying to understand their unique perspective can sometimes minimize their experience. Let them share their own experience and their memories really just in their own words. And sometimes this can be really hard within families because we often remember things a little differently. And it's important to acknowledge that we all grieve differently. We talk a lot here at The Warm Place that when we have experienced the death of a loved one, we have lost the same person, but at the same time, we've lost a different person because our experiences are different. The time that we have spent with them is different. And it's something to just acknowledge that we all are going to express that in different ways. Have you ever talked to someone who is grieving and you felt like, oh, I just said the wrong thing? Finding phrases that are more supportive can really be helpful when talking to someone who is grieving. During this past month of November, we actually participated in the national movement for children's grief awareness. This year, we talked about flipping the script. So let's kind of take a look at this and think about, for example, this holiday season. Instead of saying, the holidays must be so hard for you. Try this. I'm so happy to see you. I know sometimes the holidays can be hard after someone dies. Even if you just say to someone, I'm just so happy to see you or I'm glad to see you. During this time, it can be really hard to get out and about. So when you do see someone who is grieving, letting them know that you're happy to see them can be really helpful. Let's walk through just a few more common phrases and practice flipping the script. So one of the things I wanna say before we dive into this is that the phrases that you see listed here are not necessarily terrible things to say, there's just a better way to say it. So instead of saying, I'm sorry for your loss, try this. I know there are no words to make it better, just know that I'm here and I want to support you however I can. Instead of saying, how are you? Try this. I've been thinking about you and I wanted to check in and see how you were doing. Remember, if you are sending a text or reaching out in this way to someone and asking them how they are, or you want to let them know that you're checking in, it is really important to let them know that there is no pressure to respond. 
You're just wanting to let them know that you're thinking about them. And also this last one, instead of you need to be strong, try this. You might feel like you need to be strong, but you don't have to with me. One of the things that we hear a lot from our teens, as well as our adults, is that people will often approach them and say things like, you're so strong, or I don't think I could do what you're doing. And it's really important for them in that moment, they're thinking things like, I don't really have any other choice. This is really what I need to do for me. So just letting somebody know that it's okay, that they don't have to be strong and they don't have to be strong in front of you is important. Throughout the years, our families have been our greatest teachers. We often ask our families, what has been most helpful to you on this journey? Here are some helpful words from our warm place adults. Find friends who are comfortable sitting in silence with you. Identify your triggers and tell people what you need. Find people who will say your loved one's name and share memories of them. Let your body feel what it feels. Cry, be active, process. Just let it be expressed. It's okay to cry in front of your kids. Express yourself. I also wanted to encourage you to check out one of our recent blogs on, on grieving through the holidays. The blog highlights lots of worries and hopes for the holidays. Our adult caregivers shared some wonderful words of lived experience and gifts of hope and comfort. A few years ago, one of our families shared this quote and found it helpful in their grief journey. Grief does not change you, it reveals you. If you allow yourself to feel it for as long as you need to, even if it is for the rest of your life, you will be guided by it, you will become someone it would have been impossible for you to be. And in this way, your loved one lives on in you. There are many ways that we are going to talk about approaching this holiday season, but there is something incredibly comforting knowing that your loved one lives on in you. Over the years, we have talked a lot about how to cope during the holidays and how to share different ways with others how we're truly feeling. We wanted to share this special reading with you today, The Grievers Holiday Bill of Rights by Bruce Conley. Holiday Bill of Rights. You have the right to say time out. You have the right to tell it like it is. You have the right to some of those bah humbug days. You have the right to do things differently. You have the right to be where you want to be. You have the right to have some fun. You have the right to change direction midstream. You have the right to do things at different times. You have the right to rest, peace, and solitude. And then you have the right to do it all differently again next year. I want you to just kind of take a moment to sort of breathe it in and really give yourself permission to do what is right for you and to do what is right for your family. For some of you, this may be your first holiday season without your loved ones. How many times has someone asked you, what are you doing for the holidays? The idea of making plans without your loved ones this year is really hard and at times, it can be like an impossible task. It helps to focus on what feels best for you and for your family. Let's spend some time together talking about navigating grief during the holidays. Communication is key during this time and we know that. It's really important for you to reflect on your individual needs as well as come together as a family to be able to discuss what feels like the best plan for you. You will inevitably have varying opinions, but <laughs> it's important to communicate your wishes. 
Some families have said over the years that they really wish that they had voiced their needs more clearly and sometimes participated in things that they really didn't want to do or didn't feel like they had the capacity to do. Discuss what rituals really matter the most and what would you like to continue? One of the things I want us to do is to consider the uniqueness of holiday memories. Many of you can attest that certain smells can bring a flood of memories and different types of emotions, and sometimes even a smile. It's okay to create new traditions while really deciding if you want to keep some of the existing ones. Creating opportunities for you to share and truly listen to each other helps everyone feel seen and that their feelings are valid and important. And that's incredibly important during this time. Sometimes people will reserve saying what they truly feel because they don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or they feel like it's a have to. And it's important to remember, and it's crucial, in fact, to be mindful of family dynamics. We know that after the death of someone you love, that family functions are going to look different and your relationships may change. The people that you talk to, the people that you live with, the people that you spend time with, that may have changed drastically after your loved one died. Children may be mourning not only their loved one, but also the change in their family environment. And we really need to consider that and what that is doing for a child as they are grieving during this time. It really can be difficult for everyone. At times, children may seem like they're coping really well, but then sometimes some of different types of behaviors can kind of change down the road. When I think about this, one of the quotes that comes to mind that I often share is just because I carry it well, doesn't mean it isn't heavy. One of the things that can be incredibly helpful to you is to give yourself and your children space to express themselves and give yourself permission to let go of any social pressures or expectations. Remember, ask your children what they wanna do or even ask them what they don't want to do. And here's the thing, know that you can always, always change the plan. One of the most important things during this time is making connections, whatever that may look like this year. Remember to check in with yourself. This is so important. You want to be mindful of what you need even in a moment. So take some time to reflect and really just to share with others what this time is like for you. Perhaps some of the things that you're worried about or some of the things that really have been difficult for you. I encourage you to participate in opportunities of remembrance like candlelight ceremonies or even just finding a time for you to kind of contemplate what you want to do individually or really coming together as a family. Some of our families have shared that they've written down things that they want to do. One really fun activity that we've been doing here at The Warm Place is the families have been creating a family activity calendar. And so they created a calendar and jotted down things that they wanted to do for the next couple of weeks before the holidays. Find ways to connect as a family and with your friends on your own terms. Here's something that's incredibly important to remember. It's okay to say no to events and it's okay to leave early. We have some family members that talk about that they give themselves kind of like a time frame. They'll say that I'm gonna stay here for about 30 minutes, or I'm gonna try to stay for about an hour and see how I feel. Just be honest about how you're feeling in that moment. And then tr truly be honest yourself about how you're feeling about this holiday season. Some of our families talk a lot about the days leading up to a holiday a special event can be a lot worse than the day itself. And we talk a lot about embracing compassion for ourselves and others, and that's something that we want to continue to remember to do. Families have shared that they are considering starting some new holiday traditions this year. This can be a time to just reflect on good things and then be able to participate in activities that honor and remember our loved ones. At The Warm Place wanted to share some of our Warm Places families, time honor traditions, and some activities that you can do either on your own or with your family. 
Over the years, our Warm Place caregivers have shared lots of traditions that have been helpful for their family. One of our families recently shared that they started buying ornaments to symbolize specific milestones. So for example, you could get a house ornament if you moved homes, or you could get a diploma if your child recently graduated. Another one of our families shared when they get together with their extended family, that each person brings an ornament that reminds them of one. They have enjoyed adding these new ornaments to the tree each year. Another special holiday tradition that many families have included over the years is including their loved ones stocking each year and writing a special message. Some of the other meaningful tra traditions that are listed here were actually provided to us by some of our teens and families over the years. Writing notes of gratitude to your family or friends or really anyone that has made such a difference and a powerful impact in your life can be something that helps you to be able to express yourself as well as to let others know how much you appreciated what they did for you. Writing a year in letter to a loved one was actually something that was brought up by one of our teens. This was an activity that was inspired after she received a Christmas card from a family member that had included a, li a list or kind of a letter of all the things that had happened in the past year. So this was a way for her to be able to write to her loved one and to share some of her milestones. Sharing past holidays with your other loved ones and things that you remember past holidays with your loved one can be very special. And making a fun music playlist or even a watch list of movies can be great. One of my favorite memories was a family had shared that their loved one loved the holiday movie Elf, but that was actually not their particular favorite. So one of the things that they do now is to continue to watch the movie Elf and kind of giggle and laugh in the parts that they knew their loved one would. Volunteer together as a family, volunteering together as a family is something that really can be something that can kind of shift what that day can look like. If you're wanting to do something together as a family and forego some of the traditional activities you normally participate in. Participating in an activity that reminds you of your loved one can be a really great way to honor them and to remember them this holiday season. One of our favorite activities here at The Warm Place is to give everyone a time to reflect on what they need most this holiday season. And sometimes that can be hard. Knowing what you need can be very difficult. Sometimes simply talking about the upcoming holiday can be helpful, or you can give someone an opportunity to write or to draw something that they remember most about their loved one. It helps to start conversations about how you want to include your loved one this holiday season or perhaps what you would want your loved one to know. Like for example, writing a year in letter, like we talked about earlier, is a great way to share what you're wanting to say to your loved one during this time. Find a quiet space to just reflect and give yourself some grace through this process. Sharing how you're feeling about the holidays this year is so important. Be authentic with others and express how you truly feel. You can ask yourself questions like, how would you like to include your loved one this holiday season? What would you want to say to your loved one during this time? And how are you feeling about the holidays this year? Family luminaries are a great way to come together as a family and to create a unique design, just really to kind of share your memories about your loved one. Some of the ways to approach this would be to write your loved one's name. You could put family names or just inspiring words or quotes. There's lots of ways that you can create your luminary. A few years ago, we actually did luminaries as a family project, and we did this on Children's Grief Awareness Day. And when we did this, we actually spelled out the word hope. You can use small paper bags. We use battery operated candles, which I would suggest. They also sell a lot of different designs on Amazon if this is something that you're interested in doing. The luminaries that you see pictured here, we purchased on Amazon and they came um, with the butterfly cutouts pre-designed. And so they have lots of different things that you can choose from. Each family member could create a luminary to line your walkway, or you could choose to just do one as a family project. A few years ago, one of our families shared a very special memory of their Nana and her pumpkin bread. This wonderful tradition was then shared as a special Warm Place blog. Now making Nana's pumpkin bread recipe 
has become a holiday tradition for many of our Warm Place families. Baking can be a lot of fun during the holidays, and it can be a special way to remember your, your loved one. I wanted to share a special quote from our Warm Place family. Nana would be thrilled to know that we shared her recipe with, recipe with the Warm Place. I would encourage you to try the recipe out with your loved ones this holiday season. It's been so fun to see our friends and family sending us pictures of them doing the same, and it fills our hearts to see Nana's legacy continue to live on. I encourage you to try her recipe as well. The recipe makes enough to share with your family, friends, coworkers, or neighbors, whoever you want to share it with. It's a great way to spread joy and comfort and to continue Nana's legacy. I also encourage you to check out the blog on our website about this wonderful special holiday tradition. The Tree of Strength is a really fun activity to give you an opportunity to just reflect on things that have been helping you. You can start out with a piece of paper and something to write with, and you can trace your wrist and hand onto the piece of paper, leaving your fingertips open. You're gonna turn the ends of those fingertips into branches, and then you're going to begin adding leaves. On each leaf, you can write different types of strengths, coping strategies or activities, or even people that have really been there for you. The one that is pictured here, I wanted to highlight and just give everyone some ideas about some of the things that our families have shared that have helped them. Perhaps maybe trying some new things or really leaning in and listening to each other. Writing a thank you note. We talked a lot about those notes of gratitude. Finding some time alone, or maybe you wanna text some friends. Or just cuddling and spending time with your pet. Doing different types of activities like painting or crafts, or perhaps you like to put together holiday puzzles or play games. Taking some time to just breathe and really being intentional about breathing. Knowing that spending time with family and friends, being able to have time to talk, there's lots of different things that you can do that will help you to feel supported. And it's really a great way to illustrate what has been helping you most. best ways to feel comfort is to be intentional about your own care. There are a lot of things that we can do to help ourselves when we think about taking care of ourselves. Perhaps breathing exercises or even meditation or yoga. Some families have shared that journaling has been really helpful to them. I know that not everybody likes to journal, but I wanted to share this with you for some people that this may be something you might be willing to try. Some of our families have shared that they keep a gratitude journal. They'll write down some of the things that they feel grateful for and they keep that with them on, the regular, on a regular basis. Some of our teens have shared that they actually write a little bit about their dreams or their goals in a journal. And this is something that helps them to stay focused, not only in remembering their loved one, but wanting to accomplish important things in their life. Some of our families have also shared that they just sometimes jot down daily thoughts and the great part about this, when families have shared that journaling is a great way for them to feel supported or to cope, is that this is something that helps them to be able to share with others if they want. I've had family members that have actually brought in their journal and shared a little bit about what they feel grateful for. One of the things that can be a fun thing to do as a family is to be creative. Not everybody's crafty, but there's something about making something in memory of your loved one that is very powerful. I also encourage you to get out into nature. Have some time just to kind of breathe some fresh air. It's a little chilly right now, but a lot of families have shared that one of their favorite things to do is when everybody gets home is to go for a family walk. I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper into the idea of kind of making a music playlist. Some of the teens, we've talked a little bit about, you know, creating a playlist or listening to music that actually fits your mood. And then also creating a playlist that is more for a desired mood and kind of maybe wanting to cheer them up or really kind of lean into how they're feeling. One of my favorite things that families have shared over the years is that part of what makes them feel better is giving back. And so volunteering, whether that's volunteering on your own or volunteering as a family, like we talked about previously. One of the most important things right now, and truthfully, if you hear nothing else today, is showing yourself kindness and showing others kindness. During the hustle and bustle of this holiday season, I think it's really important to remember 
that when we are out in the community to show others kindness, we don't know what other people are going through. And the last thing that I have listed here is talking about really making an effort to rest and the importance of recharging. Most of our kids and even us with our electronics, we very rarely let our electronics go to 0%. However, sometimes we do not make a priority to recharge and rest ourselves. There are so many activities that you could participate in that offer opportunities for remembrance. We really encourage families to just ask their children what they would like to do to remember them. So you could ask, what would you like to do to honor and remember them? We encourage families to work together and find what works best for them. What activities or new traditions would you like to do as a family? I wanted to share a story that recently came up where we were talking through what are some traditions that you want to keep? What are some things that perhaps that you are not going to do this year? And one of our families, they were talking about decorating cookies. And this for some of their children was one of their favorite things to do and they were looking forward to it. But for the other children, they were worried that if they made cookies, that it would be something that perhaps would be difficult because it was something they did with their loved one. And so what was great is the family actually decided to continue the cookie decorating tradition, but they gave the children space if they didn't want to participate and really allowed them to say like, it's okay if you don't want to do that this year. And so thinking through some of the different opportunities that you have as a family, whether that's now during the holiday season or whether you want to participate in some of our remembrance activities that we do in the future, there's a lot of different things that we do here at The Warm Place to give children and families in our community an opportunity to remember them. So one of the things I wanted to highlight today is a really great resource to all of us, which is the National Alliance for Children's Grief at NACG.org. The National Alliance for Children's Grief offers several helpful toolkits as well as resources. The one that we're highlighting today is of course the holiday toolkit. This holiday toolkit has different types of tips and activities and conversations just to kind of help you during this holiday season. Often during this time, as we are gathering with our families for food and meals, this is definitely at the center of most of our gatherings. And it can be a time when it is very obvious that our loved one is missing and that that empty chair can be really hard. It's also can be a time in a great setting for wonderful conversations and remembrance. So some of the ideas and conversation starters are, what was their favorite holiday food? What was their favorite holiday or even their favorite holiday tradition? What can you do to feel close to your person this holiday season? What do you want to remember and hold on to? And what do you want your future generations to know about them? NECG is also a great resource to help families find grief support centers and hospice programs across the US. Across the US. So for example, if you have a family or a friend that lives in Denver, Colorado, they can go to the find support tab and have an opportunity to put in their zip code and information and you'll find Judy's house is a great resource for them. Perhaps you have family that live in the Houston area. You can put in information and find out that Bo's Place is a great resource for families in that area. Some of you may be familiar with our Warm Place services, but I am excited to be able to share a little more about our program and our team. And I want to update you on our exciting expansion project. When the Warm Place opened its doors for the first time in 1989, we became the first grief support center for children in the state of Texas. Our original location was in a small home just near Cook Children's Medical Center, not too far from our current location. We are located at 809 Lipscomb Street near the Hospital District of Fort Worth. We moved into this home in 2002, and as some of you know, we have expanded our current home by over 3,000 square feet to serve more families. We had our dedication and our open house just a few months ago, and we would love to have you come by for a tour. 
The Warm Place offers grief support services at no cost to the families participating in our program, thanks to the generosity of our donors. There is also no geographical limitation and there are no time limits. Our mission here at The Warm Place has never changed. We provide grief support for children ages three and a half to 18 years, of old, years old and their families. We also serve young adults out of high school ages 19 to 25 who've experienced the death of a loved one. I want to share a little bit more about our team and some of the different groups and services that we have in the next few slides. I've enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'm honored to introduce you to our Warm Place program team. Picture next to me is Christina Miramontes. Christina is a licensed professional counselor supervisor and our group director for our Monday nights. Christina actually started as a Warm Place volunteer and she coordinates our sibling group night and one of our parent loss nights. Christina speaks fluent Spanish and helped get our adult Spanish group started in October of 2022. Next to Christina is America Gonzalez. She is one of our group directors for our Tuesday nights and is a licensed clinical social worker and coordinates our grandparent, extended family member, and friend loss night and one of our parent loss nights. America is fluent in Spanish and will help us grow our adult Spanish groups in the future. Next, we have Cassie Parsons, our group director for two of our parent loss nights on Wednesdays. And she is also our coordinator for our adult program. Cassie is a licensed professional counselor associate and a longtime Warm Place volunteer. And we have our newest addition to our team, Nicole Smith. Nicole is a licensed professional counselor and she coordinates two of our parent loss nights on Thursdays. I am so incredibly honored to work with these wonderful professionals. Some of you may be familiar with our evening support groups for our children. Our children are in through kindergarten through 12th grade for our evening support groups and their families. We have six nights that are designated for children who've experienced the death of a parent. We have one night for children who've experienced the death of a sibling, and we have one night for children who've experienced the death of a parent, extended family member, or friend. Our evening peer support groups are ongoing and they're year round. When a family is assigned to one of our group nights, they meet every other week in their respective groups. Our children's groups are usually children in kindergarten through second grade. Our preteen groups are typically third through fifth grade. Our young teen groups are usually sixth through eighth grade, and our teen groups are typically ninth through 12th. The adults also have peer support groups as well, and they meet at the same time as the children's groups. One of the things I wanted to highlight is we offer in-person groups as well as virtual. In our in-person groups, those meet Monday through Thursday, and our virtual groups meet every other Tuesday. Our adult Spanish group that I mentioned about, that talked to you about, actually meets every other Monday. All of our in-person groups actually start with a potluck dinner and then we have group time. Group starts with a little bit of soft music and then we go around in a circle to share our name, the person in our life that has died. And sometimes we'll talk a little bit about how we're feeling that night. We do a lot of different activities to share about our feelings, memories, having opportunities to tell our story and to develop healthy coping skills. Our pre-K groups are actually designed for our children ages three and a half to five who have experienced the death of a loved one. Children attend weekly sessions for 10 weeks in the fall and spring with a parent or guardian. Group sessions are typically held during the day from noon to one and they are offered on Wednesdays. This offers families a space to be able to share their feelings and to create memories with other families who are also grieving and to connect with others. Our next session starts up in February. So if you have families that are interested in our pre-K program, I encourage them to reach out to schedule an intake appointment. Our young adult groups are for men and women ages 19 to 25 who've experienced the death of a loved one. We meet in the evenings for eight sessions in the fall, spring, and summer. Group sessions are held for about an hour and 15 minutes. They meet in the evening on Wednesdays and their next session also starts in February. So if you have a young adult in your life, encourage them to reach out to us. They will schedule their own appointment to be able to get started with our young adult program. 
One of my favorite things we do here at The Warm Place are our family nights. We have six family nights a year, and they are something that we all look forward to. Our family nights focus on making new memories as a family, and all of our Warm Place families are invited. It's always so much fun to get together our past, present, and future families to be able to have a fun night and to connect. We just had a wonderful holiday-themed family night this past Friday, complete with ugly sweater contests and a minute to win it games. It was a great night. Our next family night is actually coming up in January and we will be playing a fun dice game and enjoying some delicious barbecue. We can't wait for our Bunko and barbecue family night. One of the weekends I look forward to all year is our Camp Remember Me. This is a fun filled weekend. It is a great way for our families to remember their loved ones and to connect with other families who are grieving. We enjoy time hiking, going canoeing, archery, and even some arts and crafts. One of our Camp Remember Me traditions is to create a family flag. Each family shares their family flag with the group as part of our camp closing ceremony. Each family receives a special walking stick to serve as a flagpole for their flag, and it serves as a reminder that they are not alone on this journey. One of the things that I wanted to share with you today is we truly want to be a resource for you and your family, and of course, our greater community. There are so many resources available on our website, as well as I mentioned the NACG website. There's a lot of different things that we want to be able to do to connect with you. I encourage you to view our website for valuable resources. Also to follow our blog and social media for all of our upcoming events, grief support activities, and any type of helpful content that you're looking for. Our website has a lot of different information that you'll be able to search and learn a little bit more about some of the topics that you're interested in. Some of the topics that I wanted to highlight that are on our website is we have information on how to help a grieving child, myths about grief, 10 things grieving children want to know, how to just talk to children about death or how to talk specifically to children and teens and how they grieve, how to talk to children about suicide, and one of the most common questions that we get is how to include children in memorial events. You can contact me directly at our main number, or you can email me at Dana at thewarmplace.org. You can also reach out to any of our incredible Warm Place staff members at the same number. I look forward to being able to connect with many of you in the future. I'm now going to turn it back over to Katie for our Q&A portion of the webinar. Thank you so much, Dana. So it looks like we do have a few questions in the chat box that have been submitted. As a reminder, if you have a question that you have not yet submitted, go ahead and type that now. So first question, and we love this question, how do I get involved in volunteering at the warm place? So we love our volunteers. We could not do what we do without them. Um, and we are currently looking for more volunteers and we even have a big training coming up. So we have a couple of different volunteer opportunities here at the Warm Place. So the first one is our house parents. Their role is to help welcome families as they come into the house in the evening, you know, help them with the potluck dinners, take their dishes, you know, maybe someone brought a bagged salad that just kind of needs to be assembled. They help with those types of things. Uh, the time commitment for a house parent is from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. every other week. So about four hours a month. Dana actually started as a house parent almost 30 years ago and look at, look at her warm place <laughs> journey now. So pretty incredible to see what that, where that can take you. Um, Another volunteer opportunity that we have here is our group facilitators. And these are actually the individuals that work with the children in our peer support groups. So obviously they play a very large role in our program. The time commitment for facilitators is 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. again, every other week. So that's about eight hours a month. 
Um, I can speak from experience. Not only do I work here at the Warm Place, I also am a group facilitator on Monday nights, and it is an incredible experience. Um, really, it's anyone that just has a heart for our mission, has a heart for children. Um, we have all walks of life that serve mm -hmm. as group facilitators here. Um, anyone that's interested in either of these volunteer opportunities, we really encourage you to go to our website. We have a volunteer application there that you can complete. Um, our next training session for those that are interested more specifically in the group facilitator role um, is actually coming up in February. So um, we can definitely send out more information on that if you would like it. Uh, and we would love to have you join our uh, Warm Place volunteer family. And I'm going to hand the next question over to Ms. Dana. Okay. All right, so the next question that we received is, do you offer other presentations like this? Yes, this is a great question. I encourage you to check out our website and follow us on social media for all of our upcoming training. And then also you can contact us to request different types of participation excuse me, participation in like resource fairs, uh, different types of community events and different types of presentations that we need specifically, and even to just schedule a tour. Uh, we are actually hosting an in-person training at the Warm Place uh, coming up in January. Um, we provide all types of different types of presentations throughout the community. But if you are interested in our Grief Talk Activities Workshop, um, that is actually coming up on January the 19th. Awesome. All right. Next question, we're going to kind of make this a two part question. Um, so one of them is, you know, how does a family reach out? How do they, you know, go about having an intake? And then also, if we went through the intake process, how long would it take um, before we hear back? Basically, I'm assuming before we can be placed into group. Got it. Um, so for a family, how for them to get started, the legal guardian would actually contact the warm place um, and then speak with one of our group directors to schedule that initial intake appointment for their family and the child. The intake appointment usually takes about an hour. Um, we schedule the intake appointments typically Monday through Thursday, and those are appointments scheduled throughout the day. Um, families will meet with one of our licensed mental health professionals for that intake assessment. Um, and then families have an opportunity to get a tour of the warm place and also watch a brief video. It gives them a better idea of like what our services look like. And then they're also going to have an opportunity to share about their loved one and their grief journey. Um, if you have gone through our intake process, this is one of the exciting things about the question that was asked earlier about volunteers is one of the things that we're hoping to do is to be able to add additional groups in February after we have additional volunteers. So as I mentioned about our exciting expansion, we are also looking to be able to grow some of our groups as well. So if you're needing additional resources or even just to connect with us, you can always reach out, but we're hoping to be able to reach out to you very soon as other families close to get you assigned to a group night and then also to be able to start some of those new groups in February. Awesome. Any other questions from the group? I think that was everything I saw in the chat box. If not, Dana had her email in that presentation. Mine is just Katie, K A T Y, at thewarmplace.org. If there's anything you're needing from a communication standpoint. But like I mentioned, we will be sending out this recording um, probably tomorrow morning to the group so you can review and send to anyone else that you would like. Uh, and then we'll also be sending a short survey with that as well because, you know, love feedback. But that is it for us. We hope that this was helpful to everyone and that you all have a wonderful rest of your day and holiday season. Thank you so very much. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining um, our webinar. If you are interested in learning more about some of the activities that we have, um, as I mentioned, our Grief Talk activity workshop is on Friday, January 19th here at the Warm Place. Um, we're going to be welcoming counselors, teachers, administrators, um, anyone who has not had an opportunity to experience that. Um, our upcoming in-person workshop will be a duplication of the hands-on training we did in October. Um, just stay tuned um, for more information. Uh, registration will open January 2nd, and we will close uh, registration on January 12th. Um, I wanted to end our time today just with a quote uh, by Maury Schwartz. Uh, Death ends a life, 
not a relationship, all the love you created is still there. All the memories are still there. Here at The Warm Place, we hope your holiday season is filled with lots of love and remembrance, comfort, and hope. And remember, you are not alone in this journey. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to connect with you again soon.